Okay, happy Fourth of July, everybody. And my God, this is my first time for a long time. I'm actually doing this first without Jamie, <laughs> uh, pre-jumper. And I think today's topic was be really good. Uh, I think the summer is extremely summer heat. Uh, Jeff, can you look at the monitor? How many people are on the West Coast? And how many people is on the East Coast? And anybody Midwest? Huh? Midwest? Okay. Uh, please ask question and Jeff will feedback to me because I, I it's this is actually a very general topic. If you, everybody like it, we can specific go into some of more particular genre on the summer culture. Uh, how many have uh, extremely heat wave in your own region so far this year? Okay. Uh, L.C. Spencer said 118. Oh, you break my record. I have, a, we have 116, right Jeff? Last year, for almost 10 days, 10 days. I never happened ever in my, uh, since I'm in business, since 1986. And the even the standing here with a cooler is like 95 degree here, and I was extremely hot. Oh, by the way, I hope you don't mind if I drink any water. Please do drink a lot of water for yourself and also for your orchid. Uh, let's talk about the, the, the heat in the orchid and people. Uh, I rather to simplify is uh, a lot of orchid just like us. If orchid, if you, you are comfortable for the weather, your orchid will be comfortable. So if 118, if it's been outside, if you do have your orchid outside, it will be fine. Oh. Judy have a happy 4th of July arrangement for me. That's nice. Oh, that is nice. Okay, and Jeff? Okay. So I'm gonna show you what the, the stress on the orchid is actually a, a physiology response. Uh, when we get sick, uh, as a baby, we can cry, we can tell the body better have, I'm not comfortable. But when orchid and plant, they communicate with us, the owner, is by showing us the foliage. Okay, uh, this is a perfect example of the plant on the extreme stress. And since I grow this plant myself, so I can tell you what's wrong with it. It is also has the stress from underwater, high humidity, uh, low humidity. This is before. The, the, Problem has been corrected. This is before. Okay. Uh, so this is they show it to you, and they also has some. When what happened with plant under stress, especially at low humidity, and the plant are under stress, just like in people, we have a lower immunity system, and so they the plant are more subject to pest and disease infection. And in this case, okay, this is not, technically this is not a disease. Luckily, because we always use them bison once a week, once a month as a preventative. So they actually keep it on bay. What's causing this here is the print is telling you that uh, I'm too dry and also I need to repot it because uh, this is actually one of those, those double plants we plant two seeding together so when you had the double plant and two seeding together you had to we'll make sure you keep an eye on it I know sometimes Jamie Jumper have the double plant so they're gonna think about this they had two plants in there had two root system and competing with the same amount of water so this is a perfect example uh, a lot of people say, oh, I see spot, gotta be disease. In this particular case, this is not a disease. Uh, I, 
I actually save this plan for this talk for, for about a couple months. It's actually want to induce the stress. Uh, so what happened is we not give this as an example. Uh, I could not water. I could not uh, repot the plant before because it is really stressed. But since not the plant, because you had to listen to the plant and observe the orchid, it's actually it's already come back the shock. So it already put out a new leaf coming up. So this is actually time for me to do some clean up and repotting. And before I do even do the repotting. We can do actually some cosmetic shot. I already find the tool. And I always do it. So lots of you do, uh, this is the bottom leaf, it's yellowish. I'm gonna leave it alone because this is still still some photosynthesis. But I'm just gonna cut off like this one here has sign of the old thrip infection. This is thrip. It's dead. You gotta take it care of. But the problem with the thrip, I know Elantator has some thrip issue. This is uh, a trick on the microscope. It's actually dead, but the physical damage on the thrip is there. So what I usually like to do is, since this have a new leaf coming out already, I'm gonna remove it. We're gonna do some custom it. Hey, you can play it. if it has mites or thrips. You got, you got a uh, uh, thrip. And I will go over the preventative and the solution for mite or thrip. So this, now it's a lot cleaner, okay. So then I'm going to always look on the back of side of the leaf, okay. So you got some all physical damage. Now I think I'm going to cut this off because you got all my. Okay, so I'm going to wait until next week. To do any repotting, I don't want to give it a shock. Uh, okay, I'm gonna settle, and then this weekend tomorrow, they're gonna to go through their uh, five cent solution treatment. So, but this is the uh, all scar tissue from a uh, possible combination of mite or drip, but in this particular case, it's a mite. So. How many of you have mite problem this year, which is really severe uh, in the West Coast this year? And I was surprised to, to learn uh, Elan Taylor have also have some issue in Florida because in Florida it's very humid. Uh, uh, how many of you have problem like this? Okay. Okay. So in, in theory, the mite and thrip love in the environment is very dry, which is perfect on the West Coast. And if you're in Seattle or uh, Oregon, you have a lot of uh, extreme heat this year. But last time when we spray in the greenhouse, we can taking care of everything inside the greenhouse. But it's outside. Okay, you might have a big backyard. You might have hydrangeas, for example. You might have roses. A lot of time when we walk in the field, walk in the park, we also bring home a lot of insects with us. Uh, not knowing that we are shoe, we are pen, okay? So this is pest and disease is part of the, the environment and foreign culture that we have is this pathogen is this longer than human on this earth. They are here for a purpose. Uh, some of them just to irritate us. But this is another uh, case of the extreme uh, stress on the multi floor okay and in this this is the case it uh I, I for me i do know this one here because this one was reported about a week ago and one thing about reporting into a week ago uh it was really hot and dry 
this because the new uh, party media and they were kind of in between with between the mega dry so it got hot and dry because picture this every time this is what sometimes I, like we love to use moss well the moss keep the, uh, the root area very moist the fresh orchid bark whether it's Douglas fir or kiwi bark the fresh bark is very very hard very hard to be wet so they're very dry so when you have recently repotted past your patio, for example make sure you double water when I say double water you water once kind of let it wet and you come back again so this is the case of the cup it's not disease but greater physiological response to the stress from underwater because the bark, the root area cannot pick up any of the water in the water flow. So they are not going to stress, so they are going to do, I'm going to do this. I'm going to cut off. And here is possible of fungi infection because I can, I'm going to cut this out and I can just focus on the step. So, just me focus on this two step here. Did you see the water here? Okay, this is the one that you don't want to touch with your hand because this is the fungi could be the uh, because the plant is stressed, the fungi see an opening and they infect the tissue. So I'm actually physically remove the tissue about a couple inches below the, this infection area and I can surgically remove it so that way it is it's dry. Okay, then after that, you make sure you spray. The surface will be, uh, the, the, the piece will be on the safe side. Use a five cent, 20. Okay, remember when we do the preventative program, we use a teaspoon only, right? Okay, when we had this uh, surface cut, I use a stronger, especially in the summertime. Uh, you use a tablespoon, just as the instructions say, a tablespoon. Because when I, I, I always like go lower, because a teaspoon per gallon is for, it's a preventative program. But when we are putting under stress, they need more help, they need more stronger doses. So I increase to a tablespoon and the reason I do that because if we do if we have been using a tablespoon per gallon like the instructions say in the hot summertime right now it's very hard to bump it up to two tablespoons uh, it, might, it might hurt the pathogen but two tablespoons might be too strong for a large orchid but multi floor pathogen might be okay because they have very thick uh, leaf structure but for us so for some other species of uh, orchid that uh, if you have masseveria uh, a very soft tender leaf orchid will be too strong for them so this is why i want you to uh, always as a preventative program a teaspoon per gallon of five cent solution but now when we're doing the repotting uh this infects like this case you can bump it up to a, a tablespoon per gallon water and spray the leaf so this is why get into the work okay many of you say you have a summer storm coming up in, in east coast okay if you if you live in florida or any area in the uh, in the south if you have a summer storm coming up a uh, uh, winter or uh, summer storm you can bring in a lot of heat a lot of humidity coming in okay we do a pre-spray of mega dry okay uh, if you have a lot of plant, uh, get a backpack, spray mega dry at a, t a tablespoon, stronger now, okay? Because when they rain, they're gonna bring in a lot of humidity, there's a lot of fungi in the air and in the mall. So you do a pre-spray, okay? And then when the storm is over, sun is up, humidity is up, that, that's actually gonna be a field day for fungi. So then, then you, you do another after the water spray, you can do as low and as, as low as you can stay at a tablespoon per gallon for 40 spray 
or if you have a lot of orchid that bend up, for example, uh, they love to be drenched. You can water them down with a teaspoon per gallon of water after the storm. Now, so this is for outside. This is actually what I, my experience, and what I was able to cope with the stress that we have experienced for almost 10 days to 14 days last year, over 110 degrees in Southern California. So I, I know that this is why we, this is why we all watch weather channel. Uh, when the, the coming, the extreme heat for the West Coast, extreme, you have a, uh, the uh, hurricane, summer storm coming, we bring in a lot of rain, pre-spread it first. You put you, your orchid a tool to help them be no more less stressful as much as they can. So this one here, just make sure you don't want to touch this ooze area, okay? And this mice strip here, so they may be dead, but they might be, uh, it might be possible, possible to come back. So I, I usually like to just physically remove and then measure it don't, at home, put a plastic bag, don't put it in the trash can because sometimes if you leave a trash can there, you only dump it every week. Uh, that can be your trash can in the outdoor area can be a source of contaminant. So uh, I usually just put in the plastic bag, a zip bag. Any of you zip bag, you did not finish, you finish by your kitchen. Recycle it, put it in there and throw it away. Uh, so this is, what you do with the plastic pellet. Okay, uh, how are you doing so far? Any question? Okay, so another possible, another good point on the uh, summer culture is, remember if possible to increase air circulation around your orchid. Uh, you notice that sometimes I've been, the, 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 this couple of days, I've been moving a lot of my orchid outdoor. The reason I love to be outdoor, we can do it. And a lot of people in New York, great because you have you have love, love the humidity, you know, moisture for for your fan analysis. Being also, I, I call it summer camp outside. You know, throwing outside, the you there's a lot of air movement in my area, a lot of air. Okay, so the air movement is actually going to reduce the temperature on the leaf of your orchid at least ten degree almost like a, 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 a spot treatment for them. So a good air movement, is especially between the leaf. If you're going orchid in the house, for example, uh, uh, I know sometimes when we go to work and then you, you a lot of timer, you might turn off your uh, AC lower or a circulation, or circulation. that's okay, to, you know, it's a big house, but maybe add an extra fan Okay, put it on timer when you are awake. Okay, you can. I love those five six dollar timer. That's that you the we do for your uh for your lamp. Put a timer. Uh, if you have a lot of on the light, for example, Jeff Kapawa can tell you with by the little stem, a little fan. Make sure you have two from each side on every label. Not just one side. You want to create a two. Uh, two fan, one here, one fan from the left, one fan from the left. So that on uh, each level of your uh, growing light, you have a air circulation point. So you have a micro climate air circulation. When the air circulation, that cooling of the leaf, remember now, all these pests and disease are opportunities. They are they thrive on the plant are under stress, so they have lower immunity system then they are more easily to be got attacked by the, this pest disease. Uh, secondly, what about the, the watering? Yes, uh, do water a lot more, okay? Now, this is not summer now, okay? We drink a lot, of, I drink about four or five uh, bottles of water when I'm working in the greenhouse because I'm concentrated. So in, in the orchid, especially in the uh, in the orchid bark mix, for example, this orchid bark mix, okay. When orchid that grow that perfect pit and all grow in the bark, bark is very open core media. They are gonna dry out really fast. In the west coast, we might have the water sometimes up to three times a week. Not because because they 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 dry already, 
Okay, we also have a lot of fan air movement. We have the fan and pad, constant moving air uh, to cool off the greenhouse. And that air movement is going to dry out the party media when you have the orchid barn. So this is why I, in the part of the previous podcast, I always say put your bark media in one area and put all the moss in one separate area. So you're not going, when you water your plant, you're not going to overwater your moss. Okay, so kind of separate, separate them. Okay, another thing is uh, many people are very afraid of getting the, the leaf wet because they're reading a lot of this and that. That's okay. Wetting the leaf is in the summertime is that uh, essential, is that for them almost like a spot treatment. Hey, I even see some marketing guru had that you can mix your leaf, your face with the water. <laughs> okay, same thing, but that's okay. You, they actually very benefit from missing the leaf, but instead of water, make a solution of five cents a teaspoon per gallon of water. But remember now, you don't want that, you don't want, uh, you don't want to use the bottle, you use fresh. You don't want to have this bottle for two, three days and then come back. The five cent is biodegradable. It's only lasts for 24 hours. So this is why I, it's safe to work in at home. Uh, so five cent, have a bottle ready. I can make a small, small bottle. Uh, depending on your collection. Mr. Lee, if you're on West Coast, in a really dry area, out, outside for example, uh, you can miss it several times a day. Sonny is asking, how many times a week could you use five cents? Five cents. Uh, like five cents right now, you can use it several times uh, for misting. You can miss it three, two, four, uh, two to five times a day because they, they evaporate. Remember now, five cents. Every day? Yes, yeah, yeah. But the, when I said five cents a teaspoon per gallon of water as a drench, that's a preventative program that doesn't stop you from use more because five cents is not for me. Is not you know I got corrected because I said I don't use fungicide. Yes, but label by label law, it kill fungi, so it's fungicide. So now I had to correct my own statement. I do not use hardcore fungicide. Uh, but this is why I, I am, but tomorrow I work seven days a week here. I do not want to breathe any of the chemical residual, especially the one that said long lasting or uh, anything that, answer. anything said long lasting, avoid to use at home. Because when they say long lasting on the plant, they're going to stay there. And I had to tell you because I, I work with a lot of, I did some consultant work in the early air of my career. Uh, I really despise and I hated that when the grocery store, the chain store, put their orchid, like I don't want to tell you which one, like the one from Monrovia, Monro the uh, start with a T, okay. They put the stuff right next to the produce department. Do you know how much chemical has been used on the cup flour? that shit from South America, that ha even had the chemical is not even allowed in California. There's no more cut flower grower in California. Not only that we can afford the labor, they take out everything that is, it, it can be applied for pests. When they're to Mexico, guess what? They're using it. And then they ship back to us. Those, those, those stuff are loaded with chemical. Okay, and then you come into the grocery store, and because of the, the trouble is the the floor department is under they don't have a floor department buyer okay this is i'm just uh, this is a good question sonny they are under the duty of the produce produce uh, buyer so the produce buyer really don't know about print oh but the, the marketing guy is great idea becoming their store see the poor product but do not I really have issue personal issue because I know what's going on behind the scene what's been used in the greenhouse okay with the stuff I do not want to wish to use but it's been used 
that anything that's long lasting result, it will be stay there. Okay, you're gonna release the gas. Okay, you, would you sunny? Would you wanna breathe those gas in your house when you tender your orchid? This is why we don't, at my nursery, I don't have always have the prettiest or perfect leaf because I we do have this applied uh, pesticide to a pest, but we do not use a harmful fungicide. So yes, how do you know a nursery have do not use a lot of fungicide? By me. Sometimes on the older leaf will have this senescence. Okay, but some this is part of. Of okay, if I want to reduce this happening, but this is part of the growth process. It's called old age. Okay, but I can prevent this by spraying some kind of fungicide that costs two hundred fifty dollars a gallon. Okay, of concentration and spread the heck out of it. But at what cost? At the, at the cost of my, my employee and also myself. But the imagine this. This is part of the natural. Having the older leaf turn yellow, we are in the aging. We age. We have wrinkle. That's okay. Why are people being brainwashed? For example, do you know how like when you go to the grocery store, that one perfect apple had no marking perfect wax, it, the, the farmer probably done four ugly one, not perfect. And those are gold wasted, they've been dumped because they're not perfect. Okay, so this is why you go to the grocery shop, that organic uh, a fruit, they're not gonna, they're gonna have some bruises, that's okay. But with orchid, I'm trying to educate customers right now. At my nursery, when you come visit with me, I do not have a wall of pesticide, a wall of fungus that I want to sell to you. But I'm trying to teach everybody that the plant grow in the natural way. Okay, I think the year I went to judge at uh, Cali, Colombia, and then we visit some jungle. You go to the, you walk in the jungle, see the orchids growing on the tree. Who spread pesticide on them? Who spread fungus on them? Yes, the leaf gonna have leaf like this but that's part of the growing cycle, okay? So why are, so why are, are, why are we become so intolerant of non-perfect leaf? Why are we so intolerant of non-perfect uh, root, for example? It's part of the natural, especially when we are dealing with a complex genus, okay? We're not just monocrop, monocrop, like final analysis at the grocery store, they just, all they do is one crop, but, but when you're dealing with Pathopedium, they might be from different species, different jungle, they're going to have their own what I call character. So I think we should embrace the difference and embrace part of it. If you see yellow leaf like this, hey, that's part of the process. They take this one for example, a multi floor Pathopedium. Okay, this is the summer stress. Unfortunately, the good and bad news. No, this is a hybrid. They last so long. The flower spike is not even finished yet. The, from the beginning to the end, almost three months. But I think this this is the case that need to repotting, but it won't be able to repot when the new shoot finish. So occasionally you're gonna see this spot, okay? And also sometimes in shipping, the stress might cause the yellow ish on the bottom leaf, that's okay. So what I'm gonna do with something like this. You can use the razor blade or the cream tool. I see some spot here, that's okay. Just for the ornamental effect. Okay, because the the plant most likely is going to last for, the frost spike most likely, likely is going to last for another couple of months. Okay, so that, that way, and then this plant, particular plant for example, that I'm going to drench with Fisen solution. Then I'm also going to fully spray at a tablespoon per gallon. At a higher concentration, spray the leaf. Any question? In 
Elaine also has a question. What causes brown tips on the leaves of the bulbophyllums, oncidiums, etc.? Okay, uh, in general, uh, are, you, are you using, what kind of food are you using? What kind of feeding? Okay, in, in general, the, the burning on the tip of any orchid in general is, is the plant is telling you that the root is not happy. They got, they, is the, uh, the biggest input that we put on plant is two. The, fur, the water quality, and the second thing is the fertilizer. Okay, good. Then also, Park, check on your, Elaine, are you, I know, I know you didn't really well. Are you using the well water in Florida? Check your well water. And also, the tip burning, it also could be the, the sign of salt buildup. So, Elaine, uh, I don't know if you have overhead watering. Do what we do in, in the summertime here. West Coast, of California. The salt, the water content is really bad uh, because the imported water from Colorado, by the time they check it down here, the, the EC, the electrical, electrical conductivity uh, is 0.8. Ideally, you don't want to have EC about one. Anything that's about one will cause the, the tipper that you let is, is saying. So and then I would, if you have the, uh, if you can use the tap water, or, it, or if you are using well water, okay, you can eat, it's free, you can uh, get a, a water report from your uh, water, water company, even if tap water. So you can see some kind of, uh, what kind of uh, uh, mineral content in there. But do a double water. Water the plant first. It can be a day before, two hours before. Then you do the, the feeding on, on them. Okay, and, but, and also, shoot me a pic any of you if you have any question shoot an email or post a question on our group this is our little family okay nothing to shy about we all and then instead of pm me for question i have so many thousands of friends okay post it in our group a lot of time if i don't have an answer we have a lot of experience growth in our group maybe in your area too, they can share and we can all learn together, okay? So now I can cover the pest, okay? The, the, the pop and also make sure you, so the temperature control, keep it as cool as possible. Anytime it about 90 degree, 90 Fahrenheit. What happened to the plant? All their stoma, their skin, they were tight down. They, the plant itself, physiologically do a shutdown. So they will not re lose more water. They will not the tip uh, burn, uh, uh, so to speak. So by keeping the temperature below 90 degree, by giving some extra mist in, and if in the west coast or outdoor, wet the floor, wet the floor. Uh, if you have a sprinkler head system, put in a timer. You can uh, remember timer. Uh, your gardener car park and design a mister system for you. You can put in a timer. You can come in just like a sprinkler head for your lawn system. You can come out every five minutes, every ten minutes, and you can adjust according to your temperature. I have customer in for uh, Arizona. You can even grow the orchid outdoor in the middle of the Arizona, but you use a fogger system. It's a nice, you know, that's rest of the micro feed, micro, uh, micro feeding. It's wonderful. When the fog hit the hot dry air, they evaporate. At the same time, they cool the air. So you can, oh, you can have a, uh, the garden design the irrigation, the mister system under your bench. It can create a nice oasis for your own input, your own backyard. Okay, any question? Spider mites. Okay, the spider mite. The spider mite, again, they love Thrift. The spider mite and thrip, they love moisture area. Then also another thing is the best thing to by the time you see them is almost too late. So uh, a lot of time what I do with a, with a spider mite issue is uh, I do uh, oil spray twice a year, and I, I don't recommend to do it right now because it's made of the heat. But neem oil and horticultural oil. And by the way, uh, I've been doing a lot because I have a lot of customers who do indoor 
and very concerned about pesticide use. So behind the scene, I have been testing a lot of the biological uh, or user-friendly uh, oil. Stop the podcast. Jamie says you're looking really good today. Am I gonna race today? <laughs> thank you, thank you. Must be the must 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 be the light that can, uh, Jeff turned on today. <laughs> okay, what do you want, Jamie? You want to bring anything for the barbecue tomorrow? <laughs> okay. Uh, I thought Jeff said start the pocket. I thought the earthquake is coming. <laughs> anyway, so uh, where am I? <laughs> spider mites. Spider mites. Okay. So by the time you see the spider mite, the physical damage is already done. But there is a solution. Okay. And I'm going to share it with you. But don't, don't sue me if it didn't work for you. Okay. It, it's kind of borderline. It's kind of dangerous. Uh, suffocate the mite. Okay. Uh, the neem oil. Whatever the, the brand that you and I will recommend a brand of neem oil. I've been doing tested, okay, and I can recommend, uh, but it's not that cool. Okay, uh, the the quality of the neem oil. Ne I love neem oil. Neem oil is actually natural. It's from the this, this extra oil from the neem sea. They've been using in India for thousands of years for children for the warm in the stomach. So neem oil is edible, but they ask also horticultural grade or neem oil will be more gentle okay so Elaine next time you have this and I try it I would not recommend if I try it myself the neem oil solution take the lowest dose okay if you say if it the, the chemical company they always want to use to use more if it say two tablespoons per gallon knock it down to one of the experiment one tea tablespoon if they say two tablespoons to one tablespoon, make a bucket of solution. And you know what? Soak, dump the whole plant into the, the bath. I call it neem oil bath. And the, that will actually not only, that will suffocate the, the insects. They cannot hide. They will, they will get rid of the mat. And then also that solution is actually gentle enough for your orchid. So, Right, so you you want to soak it at minimum one hour. Okay, so why don't you take it out of the, the what I call the neem the the neem oil bath, neem oil, neem oil bath. Okay, set aside, reduce light. Okay, so the because the plant will recover. Coat it with some oil. Okay, so you don't want to put it back to the normal area that have regular light. So you always reduce light. Put it under the bench. In the north side of your greenhouse, shady. So the plant will be, the coating will be nice there. Okay, then that will stop. Okay, the, the, the scar will be there. But that's, that's the best way to do it. Uh, you know, if you have a springer head, overhead watering, for some people have the open, overhead watering, see if you can do a, a proportional. Okay. For the extreme case, I got Elaine is in Central Florida. It's really hot. You don't want to do it in the morning because the sun by twelve o'clock it will burn your plant. You want to do it at night. Okay, after eight o'clock, you can actually spray the leaf also, but turn but leave the door or the greenhouse open, and turn on the fan as much maybe put extra fan there. Get a lot of air circulation. So. That's actually one way I find might be a solution for a lot of people problem right now. But they are, but we, we always do so a preventative. We know the mite, always, mite problem, mite and drip problem always could be in the middle of summer when it's hot and dry outside. Uh, we have a lot of Italian cypress. It's, good, it's a great host for mite and drip. And the, in, the, in, the sum, in, the, in the summertime when it's dry, they start looking for area for host to suck the water. They come into the greenhouse because the fan come in. But so we know that. So starting in in May, the end of some uh, April, we in in here we we tell our gardener start spraying all the uh, Italian cypress. You can do that 
around your area of your greenhouse, your straw, hibiscus is another good host for mini bug, for example. So no, don't just check in what's inside the greenhouse or what's inside your, in, the, in, in, in your under the light. Okay, keep an eye on your house plant. Your house plant can is a big source of insect, different bugia, the Boston fern, okay, any other tropical plant. They spray a lot of fungicide and pesticide by the hand, and those plant, those those chemical, a lot of them eliminate or just suppress the disease. Now, when they leave the nursery and go to your house, we don't spray as much, and then those are occur to come in. This is why I always say, please. Do not rescue plan, okay? I don't care how cheap they are. The one dollar at, at the uh, at Lowe's uh, Garden Center. Recently, I saw a post at one of the dummy or uh, one of the beginner office site. Somebody was bragging about, oh, he got this from analysis for one dollar and fifty. I said, please do not take those home. They have problem, and I got cream. I got I got yada. You no, know. what happened with those plants? You, know, you might think it's rescue, but think about this. They are, I work at a, a professional garden center before, as, uh, when I was in college. We dump the plant. It's, it become a very nuisance. You do not want to pass the, the problem to your customer. Those plants are maybe there, nobody can care, they finish flower. For a couple of work, three, four weeks, they are stressed. Remember what I said earlier? The plants are stressed already. They are already subject to a lot of pest and disease. Why do you want to bring it home? So they can contaminate your orchid. Or, for the beginner, they got even frustrated. What should I deal with this? Because when they bring those six plants rescue, that problem, root disease. And then you can spend more money, energy, to take care of this cyst baby, maybe had to buy some more fancy chemical. You know, and risk your collection. And risk, risk your collection. Okay, so if you on any chat group, see any of the uh, the form, the best advice for your friend is don't risk. Is the, the term is very nice. Right? Rescue. No, it's called problem. People, problem. Okay, I, I, you know. I don't even want to answer anybody's question. Say, when they come to me and they say, "Oh, I rescue this plant," I say, "Well, it, you 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 bring the problem to yourself. Why should I help you? Because I I want I rather answer that I will not even respond to that kind of question online. Because you brought in the problem, I told you not to do it, and you do it. It's your problem. Hello. Okay, so this is it. Uh, any more question before I kind of sign off? This is very general. Just do not put your plant under stress. But not under stress is keep the temperature cool below 85 if possible. Increase the air circulation, increase the humidity. Okay, and uh, you might notice that I've been posting the picture. I've been, when I push my orchid outdoor, from greenhouse outdoor, make sure you keep up with your mega dry. Mega dry, remember, every time you spray mega dry, the leaf is kind of shiny. Is the natural wax. Megatry, yes, Megatry have the ability to help the plant sustain for more re, uh, heat resistant. It's proven. Okay, uh, I, I have orchid that I thought they never ever go outside in the heat last summer. We saw Fernandez Cassinia in the background. Remember that little wearable orchid? It flowered outdoor. Just saw it. It was 115 degrees for a week or two weeks. It was under going the moss, they survive and then also down to 45 degrees. Okay, so these are the tools that I'm sharing with you. I do not like to have a fancy 10, top 10 list of chemicals that you should buy. Make it simple. Remember, always go back to what we, I told you earlier. In the wild, many of you have been to the tropical into South America, into Costa Rica Eco Tour, who spray pesticide on those night calories are growing on the tree? Who spray fungicide on them? Okay. By putting 
more chemical on your orchid, you actually subject your orchid to be more weak. Okay, the stronger one survive. But so Kevin are uh, putting more stuff is not uh, not only not good for your orchid, but also not good for yourself. So they're asking in the summertime, can you use Mega Thrive once a week? Yes, you can use Mega Thrive as a forage, but uh, what I do is, uh, but we already using uh, every other week. Okay, do you can use Mega Thrive? Yes, when the extreme case that we we have the stress when we repart in the plant. Yes, go ahead. It might be next week. I will use it right away because I want the, the plant is stressed. Just like the plant, I cut it, okay? Or right away, when I put orchid outside, even though the, the schedule might be next week, that's okay. It just costs more money, that's all. Okay, it doesn't, but it, make us right, if you, if you think about it, it's, it's four years spray. It's really not that expensive, right? the way I calculate it, okay? It gives more benefit for your plant. And then I use less chemical because the pan, the leaves shine. Look at Jeff. Look at this Shuriana. Did you see any tip burn? This just fun, no pesticide, no, no, no fungicide, no pen rot, no three in one whatsoever. And it's just happy as this. This is a species. This is native native species from Philippines. So the plant itself already have a very strong gene. So don't put all those chemical and to suffocate it on, on this in this case. Okay. All right. So um, this is a very general. So if you like, we can actually uh, we have time. We can specifically go into one particular genre. Of oh, for example, Miltonia. Okay. Remember the Miltonopsis, the Pansy Miltonia. Do not repot it. Remember, I don't remind everybody. Do not repot it right now, okay? They are cool from the mountain, hot summer month right now, they are taking their summer vacation. They are different than all the other orchids. So there are many orchids are that way. Metronopsis is one of them. Uh, Mastavaria, for example. If you repot it right now, it will rot because the plants are in, not in the motivated mood in the, what we call the growth cycle, okay? Uh, are we ready for?